Hello my dear friends! In today's video we will go over the process of installing solar panels. And as we all know, solar panels can help get electricity in places or scenarios where the grid is not an option. The full system that we have here contains the panel itself, one charge controller, rechargeable battery, inverter and a bunch of wires. When purchasing solar panels, it is good to know that there's two widely available types – monocrystalline and polycrystalline panels. They differ in manufacturing process and efficiency. Monocrystalline panels have a more size-to-power efficiency ratio, and the polycrystalline panels are generally less costly. So, in cloudy weather, polycrystalline panels will be less efficient. Moving forwards, one of the more common ones is the 12-volt type of panels, to work better with 12-volt batteries. And by 12 volts it usually means 17 to 18. It is done to negate the voltage drop when the panel is not at 100% output. Also, the panels are equipped with Schottky diodes from the factory, to save the panels when it's not outputting energy, and instead tries to drain it from the battery. In this case, the diode prevents the system from malfunctioning. Now let us see the charge controller. It maintains the charging process and prevents the battery from overcharging. The controller's job is to charge the battery when the panel generates power and disable charging when the battery is at peak 14 volts. And when the panel is idle, like in nighttime, the system works off of the battery. In case the stored charge drops to 11 volts, the controller turns off the system to save the battery from total discharge. And of course, we can connect 12 volt appliances directly to the controller. We also can use most 12 volt batteries in systems like this. LED or gel based batteries, and for indoors, best use the sealed type, like 12 volt car batteries. Now the inverter. Depending on the type you have, it will convert the battery output, in our case 12 volts DC, into 220 50Hz or 120 60Hz AC. When putting together systems like this, manufacturers recommend using specialized wiring for better isolation. And the connection process is very simple. First connect the solar panel and the controller, plus to plus and minus to minus. On the controller we see an icon where we need to connect the panel. If we have more than one, just plug them in parallel. Next we connect the battery to the controller. And the last step – inverter to the battery. Also be very careful with the polarities, because if we mess them up, the controller may malfunction and break. And a few words on correct placement of the solar panels. They need to be placed in wide, clear areas, and must face south for best efficiency. The preferred angle is 45 degrees based on the horizon. Of course, the setup can be modified and optimized. Or we could even install an automatic rotation system, so the panel could catch as much sun as possible throughout the day. So the panel generates charge while exposed to the light of the sun. The charge then goes through the controller and into the battery. The battery is connected to the inverter and gives it, like in our case, 12 volts DC, from where the inverter converts it into 220 AC. So guys, even with our dead 2-year-old battery with 4 volts output and two small panels, after about half an hour we get a consistent charge. Enough to use our power tools, especially if you have a good battery, you will have no problems getting electricity. But today's video is over, have a nice day everybody, see ya!